Welcome, everybody, to Who's Your Band? I am Jeffrey Paul. Sean Morton isn't with me today. He is on the road this weekend. So uh, I am kind of doing this solo, but not really. Uh, before we bring in our special co-host and special guest for the episode, uh, just a couple of things. Um, concert reviews. Since uh, we last uh, joined everybody, uh, it's, it's been a little bit. Uh, a lot of stuff going down. I was uh, over in Europe for a couple of weeks, uh, but we're back. And we're back seeing shows. So a couple shows that uh, we saw was uh, Sean and I went over to the Wellmont and we went to go see uh, Skid Row and Buck Cherry. And really great venue if anyone uh, was looking to go see concerts. Um, Buck Cherry, they're okay. Uh, still original members. Uh, lead singer does a great job still. Um, but Skid Row, man, they were really one of the surprises of the summer eric gronwall a uh, young kid out of sweden takes the place of uh sebastian bach it's been a while since they had a real great lead singer who can sing the song songs like quicksand jesus um really difficult songs to sing and the kids nailing it so if any if uh skid row is in your area and you have kind of like uh you're on the fence have doubts about seeing them put the doubts aside they're great great to see great set list uh, last week, uh, we went to go see the Eagles in Steely Den. And I have to say, man, Steely Den is an amazing band, not only uh, on record, but they are great live, uh, consummate musicians, 13 members on the on the uh, stage, and the sound is great. Donald Fagan still has the voice. Uh, they also put together a great set list, and they're playing for about an hour. And then you're followed up by over two hours of the Eagles and every single song that you hear is a major hit. Um, I got to say, Vince Gill is filling in really well for um, Glenn Fry. Sounds great. Uh, Glenn Fry's son, Deacon, is in the band and he sings a couple of those songs. So it's nice to have that legacy. Nice to have that connection still. Uh, Henley, 76 years old, hasn't lost anything off the voice. Sounds amazing um really really you know it was if this is going to be a true farewell this was the way to do it they play every hit uh they sound great and they leave you wanting a little bit more and then just over the weekend uh we went to go see uh last in line that's dio's band ronnie james dio's band and the cool thing about that is man you're they're playing clubs so we saw them over at the starland and you're seeing Vivian Campbell, who is the lead guitarist in Def Leppard in a really small venue with uh, Vinnie Appice, the former uh, drummer in Black Sabbath in the band. Andrew Friedman is singing. He was, you know, you may know him or remember him from uh, uh, Lynch Mob. Sounds great. Sounds great. I mean, listen, very hard to replicate Dio, but it's still great to hear these songs. They throw in a couple of originals. I would say a song like Landslide is something that really kind of stood out and again it's not an expensive ticket it's a small venue so if they're in your area go check them out all right with that said with that said we are getting this thing started i'm going to first introduce my co-host for the episode today okay this guy is a repeat um he's coming back on the show um even though last time I don't know, man. We're going to let him redeem himself. Give it up for Chris Murphy. Murphy, you remember the last episode you did? That was a long time ago. How am I supposed to remember that? That's right. Forget you. You're, you're going through the change. Um, we did the episode. We were kind of debated uh, decades of music. Yes, I had the 60s. You had the 70s. And some of the guy had the 80s. Sean had the I, 80s. Yeah, and I thought I was trying to be entertaining and funny. And then you and I and, and, and fails at you, both. You try to win. <laughs> if I know I was supposed to try to win, I would have had better points. <laughs> I don't know what you were trying to do. I don't know what you were trying to First do. First of all, they had the Beatles, so that's the mic drop right there. So the sixties were better than the seventies. Although it's kind of close because the sixties had between nineteen sixty and sixty three crappy music. It really wasn't until sixty four things picked up. Right, so, you, so you're giving up 40% of the decade. 30. Okay, but while, while the great 70s man. was great all the way through. All, all the way through, that's true. Right. That, that, that okay. is true. All right. 
Um, let's bring in our special guest. You ready, Murph? Because this I guy thought, is... I was a special... All right. You are the special co-host. No, this... Oh, I'm the co-host. You are the co-host. Okay. Yeah. We are bringing in an actor, a comedian. Okay. He is a very, very funny guy. Please give it up for Dave Juskow. Hello, everybody. Hello, you Dave. You see how Chris ruins everything? It's like it's... A, you can't trust him. That's the problem. He's funny in everything, but he just doesn't seem to get... You know, this is an entertainment field. Not everybody's in on the joke, Chris. Okay. Yeah, he does a joke for it, it, where it's just like it appeals to one person. That's, that, well, see, I always find that funny on the phone. <laughs> 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 well, you, you never got the, the, the Murphy call where he pretends like he doesn't hear you? Of course I have. I've gotten all the bits. All the bits. It's all they bits. still work. It's I still open. fall for it in multiple occasions, but yeah, it's funny that you started off that way. Cause I'm like, Oh, see, this is why I'm always afraid to use them. It's like, <laughs> nobody's going to get his bits. I mean, I'm going to get them every time. If he's going to talk about the little rascals, I'm going to get it. But uh, that is a very small bit of the population. <laughs> it's, just, yeah. it's just you and Jeff. <laughs> there's, there's a, there's an adjective called a Murphy. <laughs> when you, when you've done a Chris, explain what a Murphy is. Oh, you mean with the um, comedy the thing? It's like the uh, comic out on stage, you mean? No, the host. Oh, he's, See, about he's, to, he's about he's to get absolutely off. absolutely a useless co-host. I, he Jeff, really I'm is. sorry to point this out. It's just I... He, uh, what are you I'll, talking about? He's like, if you, if you did improv with him, he would just deny that's all right. the time to throw you off. That's right. I would he's, not. <laughs> <laughs> So a, Mur a Murphy is like when you're hosting a show, I've hosted a lot of shows that Murphy has been in the, uh, you know, he's been a comic con and then like, you'll be talking to him and then he'll go, Oh, uh, so-and-so is jumping off the stage. And then you turn around and they haven't jumped off the stage. And then he has a big laugh over it. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's, that's that's off. It's awful. I've been doing that since I was 10. Yep. So the other thing that you were alluding to, which I think is a pretty funny thing, is to make sure, like, if a of a comic, especially if it's a comic above you, is on stage and they're bombing, to make sure that you're in the room, and then when they're coming off, that they see you. Well, I got that from Rich Franchese. Um, when someone's on stage who's a really good comic, who's also happens to be a prick and stuck up and high status, like you know, like a real real jerk. I make sure he sees me watching him go down, so he'll he'll never have that on me. So he he can't pull that high status. I'm I'm not gonna name names, but it rhymes with no. I won't even, I won't I won't even do that. I'll be good. It rhymes with David Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> those, those are two Murphys. So Dave, tell us a little bit about you. You're a comedian. You're an actor. How long have you been doing this? Well, actually, I mean, I started doing stand-up comedy exactly 40 years ago. and uh, But, you know, I only get to a certain level. Although, uh, you know, I know everybody. I've been around a long time. And uh, I never really liked stand-up comedy. I preferred doing acting. And I, I like doing say, other things. So I was going to say, would you consider yourself first as a, a comedian or an actor? I don't even know anymore. I really don't. I, I don't know whether I consider either. I guess I would just always say McComic. It's easier. And I do that more often. But yeah, I never liked stand up comedy. I just did it. And I enjoyed the people in it that I met along the way. And, it, you know, it's a good social scene many times. It is. But why, why don't you why don't you like it? I don't know. It's just not my cup of tea. Do you Just, look forward to the shows? Do you, no, I get very uptight about them. It's like weird. It's like if somebody tells me like, hey, I need you to open for me, like somebody really good, I get really excited about it until a week before, and then I start to panic. And then the day, the night after it's done, I'm like really excited I did it. But all that time leading up to it, I'm a mess. Chris knows. Did you play sports as a kid? Yeah, but um, yeah, mostly uh, cross country and baseball. See, when you, I think when you played sports, you know, you would get nervous, you'd get anxiety, you know, and you would, you know, it, it taught you to deal with it. I mean, that's what helped nope, me. It was the exact same thing. Every time I played baseball, I'd hope it would rain. And that's what I feel about stand up comedy. <laughs> Who are you, Les Nessman? I, <laughs> from WKRP? <laughs> yeah. I, I always hope. Please don't were, hit it to me. 
I always hope the uh, nobody will show up at the club and it'll be canceled. That is so fucking crazy. Yeah. Well, that's why nobody's ever heard of me before. It's a problem. Yeah, but the thing is, every time I've seen you, you've always done really well. Uh, you know, it's uh, I'm hit or miss. I do well sometimes, and sometimes I don't. But I guess, you know, I always say I had one good set in 1996, and the reputation stuck. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like uh, Anthony Michael Hall. You got the rap in fifth grade and in uh, in uh, sixteen candles. So what the we... rap is being a stud in fifth grade and uh, just stuck, you know. So tell <laughs> us who you've opened for. I've opened for Sarah Silverman and David Tell and Jeff Ross and Jim Gaffigan during COVID. I remember that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you don't like doing it, and you've wor- you've obviously worked with some of the biggest uh, comedians on the planet. You know, how do you get these gigs? Like, why Why do they, they ask you? They ask because I think it's multiple reasons. I think one, I think it's mostly they just want to travel with a, a buddy and a friend. And I guess I'm a fun hang sometimes if I'm in a good mood. <laughs> it's not a problem sometimes, but I try and be really respectful. I also know my plays and, you know, um, I'm never going to be better than them. So that's never an issue. <laughs> And uh, I think that's all it comes down to, really. Just, you know, who do you want to hang out with? The hang is, you know, f- people aren't in comedy. I mean, it's really important. I remember when I first started, um, the very first night, uh, I met Nate Bragazzi and uh, Dave Smith. And you remember on Thursday nights uh, across the street from Eastville, there was a place called Cabin. And it, they would do like two for ones. So Nate takes me across the street from there, and he just kind of gives me the whole lowdown on on comedy. And one of the things he kept uh, emphasizing was how important the hang is. You know, the hang, the hang, the hang. And like, you know, it, it, he he was right because you're making connections. You know, people get to know you off the stage, and like, you know, you can bring a million people on 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 the road with you, but you want to bring someone who who you kind of get along with, right? And and Jeff, you just answered that's that's the answer to the question of why these people. I'm funnier off stage during the hang than I am on stage. That's the issue. I'm funny at the bar when Chris could tell you a hundred times, you know, like it's just some, there's some disconnect when I get on stage. It's not the same. I don't really talk about myself. I've only started to maybe talk about myself in my life. Like recently, like in the last four or five years, I just don't, I don't know why. And I'll tell everybody at the bar, everything. I'm like, oh, I just had diarrhea. I just, did, you know, whatever. But for some reason, on stage, I, 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 I want to keep it private. I can't tell you why. I'm obviously insane. Dave, Dave is the funniest man in the green room, and I don't yeah. mean that insult. No, no, it's true. That's the way it is. Yeah. But so um, can, okay, Kurt. didn't you um didn't you recently uh go on J Day and I, what happened? I got matched up with my mother. Yeah. No, you didn't. Very embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. That's not a true story. That is. Uh, you t- tell the story. No, I'd rather not if you don't mind. <laughs> I don't like to think about it. <laughs> wait, wait, hold yeah. on a second. Even you, though that's you, what all of internet porn is based on. You put yourself on J Day and you got matched up with your mom? Yeah, about about twenty years ago. She was much younger and hotter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Did I, you did you go on the date? <laughs> we ended up at the restaurant because we were using two different photos. <laughs> And, uh, she was using a younger one of herself and well you've seen back to the future anyway uh <laughs> the w- weirdest premise of a movie and we both hate my sister so <laughs> have you seen the movie musical by the way it's outstanding no it's good it's fantastic get out of here no no no, no. Just, for real it's great because really? because i saw rocky the musical oh so did i you were the only two i went with the tell david tell oh my god you know there was this, chris you've never seen rocky the musical no, there was a song called "At Least My Nose Ain't Broke." Yep, I but my oh. nose ain't broken yet. <laughs> that's the open. That's the opening song. It's it's the worst musical I've ever seen. But that last twenty minutes might have been the best musical I've ever seen. The fight really? scene. Yeah, yeah. I, that's I, why I, I went, and that's why I took David Tell with me. And at the intermission, he goes, "Hey, Dave, is this play any good?" Because he doesn't go to see musicals. And I'm like, yeah. it "Stinks." He goes, "Should we leave?" I'm like, "I've been told we have to stay for the last twenty minutes." And I'm glad we did. I'm oh, really, Jeff, I know you know what I'm talking about. That 100%. was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. So at that same theater where they redo the fights, you pretty much make it the Philadelphia Spectrum, right? Remember how amazing it was. Right, they, and they even had audience on the stage. Yeah, right. The first, uh, the stage comes out and cuts off the people in the first seven rows heads. 
and uh, you have to like they're a part of the boxing ring like it was really cool and so that's the same theater as back to the future so they can do some really great stuff there I, I, uh, how did you meet david Patel, by the way um i met him through this guy that i went to college with named mike royce and he was a com he's been a comic now for years and now he's a showrunner for like that latino version of one day at a time and a couple other things and we all he used to work at Citibank. i worked at chemical bank and david tell worked at the discovery channel and we all used to have lunch together yeah just now knows everybody but i love they took david tell to see rocky the musical yeah. i'm surprised they didn't have a number in there called cuff and link i really think you know <laughs> the turtles oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. cuff and link Cuff and link. <laughs> they make good they make good soup they make you know, good soup and they soup. don't stink and they <laughs> have a manager they have a manager, <laughs> no, manager. <laughs> i want to give you i gotta give you what i gotta be a kid i want to give it to you i didn't have it uh, uh, now do mickey <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I didn't get a lock on. Uh, my nose seen... ain't broken yet. Do you remember, like, on top, there was like a catwalk, and Apollo was up there. And now, Apollo, the night that I was there, was played by a guy who kind of resembled the kid who played Luttrell in Revenge of the Nerds. Oh my god, I love that guy. <laughs> Wait, are you talking about his limp wristed throwing style? Oh, uh, that's exactly the... what I'm I knew you would get these <laughs> And they had to make the special javelin that was yes, uh, he's that... a master of aerodynamics. <laughs> exactly. That was the that's who it looked like who played uh Apollo with a very deep well, of course type of it voice. did, Jeff. They're all gay. I mean, it's like that's <laughs> not you know, when I saw um I saw this thing with uh Jason Alexander, I think it was it was called Jerome Robbins Broadway. I think he ended up winning the Tony. This was before Seinfeld. And um I think I may have seen that. I think yeah. I saw that too. And they did a bunch of his plays. And the last one they did was West Side Story. But when you're, you know, you have three different shows they're doing Fiddler on the Roof, they're doing something else. So there's just a bunch of guys going, When you're a jet, you're a jet all the way. There's um since you were talking since it's about rock and roll and, and we're talking about Broadway too. Did you see the Green Day musical? No, it was good. No, it's awful because it's I a bunch it. of and and this is it's a bunch of effeminate men singing Green Day songs, and it was not fun. There, it's a holiday. <laughs> a lot of snip finger yeah. snapping. <laughs> yeah, no, it was not. It was not good because of that reason, and that's Didn't a problem with those things. You said I can't believe you liked Rock of Ages because you know like it, rock, I hated Rock of Ages. Oh, I thought you said you liked the movie. I liked it. I've I have been in battles. I've been on shows, radio shows. Pocket, I argue this all the time. This is easily one of the top three worst movies ever. Oh, made. okay. Thank God. Yeah, it's horrible because okay. So when I went to see Rock of Ages, I went with these guys from college. Like you know, we'd already been out of college for thirty years, and we were drunk because we all got together again and went out and had a good time. And remember, if you went to the Broadway show of Rock of Ages, they encourage you to bring beer. <laughs> like a bunch of animals and so they would do the songs which were okay because they had the broadway voices and they were all right but you know when you see somebody doing somebody's songs you're used to you just want to hear the real person so it bugs you nonetheless but then they wouldn't finish the songs and my friend just kept yelling out finish it finish it because it was getting really frustrating you're finally getting into an old warrant song or poison and they wouldn't finish the songs it was so God. frustrating chris did you see rock of ages i did not but i have a question for david um when but, you first began to musical theater didn't your mother insist on you go into chorus line and why because there apparently when they saw it when it first opened up there was a guy that reminded them of me and when i went to see it it was like the gayest guy in the show it was really embarrassing <laughs> yes, like, dave was the guy who was like i hope i make it i really hope i make um, it it was not that guy it was the guy who was like i'm watching cisco pitter pat <laughs> said i could do that i understand why they meant that because he was like tap dancing and singing and that's Did what you they tap meant. dance i yes i i used to yeah really wow yeah, so yeah, Jeff, a talented I'll, dude chris knows <laughs> it's the weirdest thing i used to you know sing and dance my my sister was telling her kids like oh uncle david's bar mitzvah theme was song and dance and they're like so everybody knew he was gay and they're like no they like i got a pass somehow 
back so then where well, my did... friends loved when I sang, it was more like a Sinatra or Alf Alpha thing. I don't know where they're like, no, this guy's good. He's going to make it. He's good. He's good. I used to sing my bunk mates to sleep in camp with uh, a song from the Fantastics. Try to remember times the of... longest running show, of... but no one ever thought That's... I was gay. It was the strangest thing. That's terrible. <laughs> I don't well, understand it. I hate when you were playing fantastic. baseball, didn't you like think it was more like the damn Yankees? Yeah. So I used to try and teach all the guys in the dugout when uh, we were in that, you know, when we were waiting to get up all the songs from damn Yankees. Come on. No, it goes like this. I go, you got to have, and I'll go up hard and you go down hard. And then the manager would come in. He's like, there's no singing here. There's no singing in baseball. And I go, well, you're my manager. Get me another kick. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I also joke. I saw <laughs> that on Broadway too, and I think if I remember, right, Jerry, Jerry Lewis, Jerry Lewis was in it. That I was at that the uh, Marriott Marquette Theater. Yep, right. I saw that yeah. too. Yeah, I think I saw it just because I wanted to see Jerry Lewis. Like, Me too. Live. I, I mean, I like that. damn Yankees, but yeah, Jerry Lewis is the shit. Uh, who was yeah, the girl? Uh, was it possible BB Newworth? I can't remember. Oh, the, I think uh, it may have been the Gwen Verdon role. No, I, think, I think I think it may Wait, are we sure we're not gay? Now I'm getting confused. <laughs> <laughs> I do know a lot about okay, this is how we know we're not gay. Let's go. Chris, you said you never saw Rock of Ages, right? No. OK, so we pulled a couple of clips. First, let me this is the movie. And let me explain the movie. To you. This is the opening scene. Dave, back me up. Tell me if anything I'm saying is wrong. OK, the movie starts where the girl from uh, Dancing with the Stars, Julianne Hough, I yeah, think her name yeah, is. She's OK. Hot. She's on she's on a on a bus. And uh, there's a, a bus driver, and he starts singing Sister Christian. Yeah. And then everyone on the bus ch starts chipping in, and they all sing. And you ready for it? They all start going, motor in. Because you get it because they're on a bus. Yeah. They're motor in. This is how the movie starts. Yeah, it's all bad. It's all bad. And it's Jim, we're talking about Tom Cruise, Alec baldwin and julianne huff, huff or russell and, brand you know really this is a good cast and a real I, I, shitty movie uh, i think um mary j blige is in it hmm. um will forte but uh, oh uh, Catherine zeta jones oh, right. um right. yeah she's at brian cranston is in it yeah they got all the stars it still didn't work there's a scene there's a scene where like Catherine zeta jones is like she's a uh, um a, a, a holy roller and brian cranston is like married to her and he's i think the mayor of the governor but he has like a dark side and they're singing hit me with your best shot and he has his pants down oh, and God. a dominatrix is hitting him with a paddle and every time they say hit me with your best shot they smack him in the butt and that's part of the entertainment i i've never been able to sit through the whole movie it's really that awful <laughs> well let's see if you can sit through two scenes and let's try and break right. down these things adam let's break out the um the oh uh, this 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 could be the worst scene ever in a movie okay um let's let's break down the scene where uh russell brand and alec baldwin fall in love chris what's about to happen here is that they work together alec baldwin owns the club and well, don't ruin it for me what, I'm I'm not ruining anything for you. I'm just giving it, setting it up. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Russell Brand is his bar back. But look at his fucking hair. Oh my god, this is he 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 looks like little Lord Fauntleroy. Right. <laughs> go, go ahead, Adam. Thanks. Not that people. What do you mean? I can't fight this feeling any longer And yet I'm still afraid to let it flow What started out as friendship has grown stronger I only wish I had the strength to let it show I tell myself that I can't hold out forever No fucking with me, are you, Dennis? Said there is no reason for my fear. This is a dream come true. Cause I feel so secure we're together. Adam, stop for a second. Even even here, Russell Brand has to overact. Yeah. Chris, are you enjoying it? Right. 
<laughs> it is beautiful, isn't it? Uh, it's it's so it's it's disturbing, is what it is. Disturbing. And the, and this book about they just got more now. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> Can we please talk about but they just got some more? No, we have to get through these two clips. You have, if we watch the movie, there's you another can one. Two clips. Oh yeah, there's another one. We got to get. Why do you make one. him a co-host? Do you see what he does? I, the I co-host don't know. You know, is supposed to make smooth transitions into things. This guy holds that? you back. Dave, has he done that at all this episode? No. <laughs> He's been a deterrent through the entire episode. And we've only been here for five minutes. That's right. I made you hilarious a number of times. All right. L- let's continue with this clip. You give my life direction. You make everything so clear. He's doing all his own singing. I'm keeping you in sight You're a candle in the window On a cold, dark winter's night This is so cringe and I'm getting this closer so than cringe. I ever thought I might And I can't fight this feeling anymore I've forgotten Murphy, would you rather have COVID or watch this? <laughs> Where's a loaded gun? <laughs> Look what they're doing. Yeah, now, now this is like throw the, away the flashback. How they feel. This makes Rocky the musical look like this feeling anymore. You're right. Oh. Yeah. I now, okay, stop there right now. You see the guy over in the corner? So the now corner? he's going to come. I know that he he's going to come in and he's going to tell Alec Baldwin, hey, uh, you got a delivery. And he Alec Baldwin goes, tell him I'm busy. And then he goes with what? And then he goes falling in love. Oh God, that Jeff, was. I mean, what, when when they made this movie, I, I mean, don't you have to like have a screening, and then wouldn't you just be like, we can't put this out? Wouldn't anybody involved? These are normal people. I mean, they're not Alec Baldwin and Russell Brand aren't normal, but you know, they're if you're if you're a normal movie goer, American. Well, he's not or whatever. You're no person you're sitting in that movie theater watching that scene and all the scenes from this movie. And, you, and, and it's not a joke because no. this looks like it would be a sketch on the Jimmy Kimmel show with between him and Ben Affleck or so or Matt Damon. Right. Ex- exactly. Did you and, and did you how, see how this you in put mo- this out? Dave, did you see this in the movies? Uh, absolutely not. I hated the Broadway show. I was not going to go see the movie. Okay. I saw this in the movies. Okay. There were prostitutes in Holland that had more dignity walking out, you know, in the, in the than I had walking out of that theater. Do you understand? It was yeah. so, Im- I was embarrassed. I was hoping nobody would see it, me. It's, it's embarrassing to, yeah, it is embarrassing. It insults your intelligence and not, and it is. You know, let's take out the fact, okay, we're straight guys, so it's disturbing to see, you know, kind of your heroes that play manly men be this way. But that's that's a whole nother thing, right? But even if it was a boy and a girl, it's still too much and it's over the top. And even though we may like the movie, for instance, Xanadu, right? I, I saw the Broadway play. Yeah, me too. <laughs> looks like we are very much alike cheyenne <laughs> jackson was in it he wasn't supposed to be but he he wound up getting leave because the, the uh, main guy got hurt oh uh, who- I, i'm sorry you know what i didn't that's exactly why i didn't go that main guy and i can't remember his name he was the guy who played tony Monero in the broadway version of saturday, of saturday night, night fever. fever that's why we went to go see xanadu and he wasn't in we got our money back so oh, I never got to see it, it. <laughs> but it was a great guy. Ke- kerry butler was in it uh jackie hoff was in it so but but you know the what i'm saying about the in the in the movie version at least that mo- that people could see it's a horrible film and yet well, the gene music kelly's is, last movie what gene, gene kelly's, kelly's last, last movie. movie yeah yeah but yet the i mean she's so beautiful so you could stare at her for hours 
And he, you know, it's not that he's on it. The guy from the Warriors is not unattractive. A great guy. But, I, I worked with him. Oh, you did? Yeah, he's oh, yeah. way cool. Really, um, really great guy. But it's Michael a horrible Beck. movie. And, uh, you know, but it's a classic and it's a cult classic. This will never be that. It won't even be it on a on a scale of showgirls. You know, this is just a very bad film. And and for all the wrong reasons. Now you've worked on you, movies um, before, right, Dave? Dave? Yeah. Didn't you, you all you you uh, did, you know, I don't know if you know this uh, Jeff, but uh, Dave actually made a movie. Yeah, I know. I was just gonna ask him. I was like, you worked on movies and there are dailies on movies, and like, you know, then like if something doesn't go right, they bring you back to wind up uh, reshooting or they won't want to try something else well jeff right? i mean um I, I teach a class now at um a, a, a university out in jersey montclair state university and right now I'm teaching a class on time travel and back to the future we just had the guy who wrote back to the future uh to talk to the kids so i just met him this guy bob gale and he was explaining which i heard, which we already know about um eric stoltz right yeah, he was originally uh, cast right. Monty McFly, right? So you know everybody knows what was happening. They they're looking at the daily Spielberg's there, and he says to Robert Zemeckis, "This just isn't work. It's working. It's not that he's a bad actor. We're just missing the fun and the gags and the comedy. Do you want want to take a chance? Like I know we don't have any money, but what if I put up my own money and let's try it again? And they reshot half of the movie over." Mostly oh, wow. at night because uh, of, of, of Michael J. Fox's schedule with uh, Family Ties. Yeah, but it's like you know when. So there's a great example. They're watching the dailies. They're not working, and they fixed it. And I don't understand how you can watch that the dailies of those movie. I'm sure they're all having a big laugh at our expense. I hope. I really hope Alec Ball and Russell Brand were having a laugh, you know, when they saw it. But if they weren't, there's something really wrong with these people. Well, if that's not enough, um, let's um, let's watch another clip here. And this is the big this is the big finale oh. where um, on one side of the street you have the Rockers, okay, and there's some guest appearances by Kevin Cronin and Debbie Gibson and Sebastian Bach, okay, and they're singing, um, "We built this city, oh boy. we built this city on rock and roll." And on the other side, you have like. The moms, the holy rollers, and they're singing, We're not gonna take it. Okay. And then Will Forte is the reporter and he's running back and forth. Adam, can you show that clip? Thank you. This this is also, I mean, really okay. This is the big scene. All right, play. But Mitch, this ends tonight. Hey, you! Mitch, he's there! Why are you so upset? There's Captain Jake. With a terrible you mustache. She looks like a pedophile. There's Kevin Cronin on the side. Debbie Gibson. Here's Sebastian Bach over there overacting. That's Kevin Cronin, that's the singer of Ariel's Speed Wagon. There's Sebastian Balcon, the best. <laughs> Look how bad this is. Jeff, can I, you know, the funny thing is, is uh, that was not as bad as the last one we saw. There's first of all, it's funny with the last one we saw and this one. I'm sitting there and I'm forgetting everything else and I'm getting into the music, right? So oh, I'm sitting there. And then the, these things. So first, I'm. Uh, it, it's not as bad as the other one. The music was was bringing me in. The girl, uh, Catherine Zeta Jones. Oh boy, I could again. I like a living Newton John. I could just stare at her for hours. She's gorgeous and she was making that sultry look. So. Uh, again, being a quote, just don't, straight just don't guy after out, talking Dave. about all this, what, yeah, apparently, right? You can throw cancer. <laughs> um, but being a quote straight guy after talking about all these Broadway <laughs> shows, you know, that's going to work for me. Uh, I, I don't really need that much 
But that last scene we saw of Rock of Ages was absolutely awful and insulting to, I think, they're, audiences. They're both off the charts cringy. And that's not even, there's so many more scenes like that. Yeah. And Tom Cruise in it too, right? It's yeah, Tom Cruise. He, also, right? he yeah. plays uh, Stacy Jacks. Oh, that's right. Stacy yeah, Jacks. St- w- w- t- terrible name. Um, Ter- I give well, him, you know, I give it's him like, it's for- like, you know, for a fact that whoever directed that movie or wrote it lived, they're probably our age and they lived in the 80s. But you would never know it from their depiction of the 80s. They must have lived in another world. Do you know who else is in this movie? Who or what? Uh, Paul Giamatti. Oh, really? Yeah, he plays. He plays like the villain. He's like the guy who wants to take over the the club. You know, I think you know the real club is the whiskey a go go in in, um, right in L A. This is called I think the Bourbon Club. Right. They just took the like name. They took the name. They took what they think the experiences are. This is the problem with Hollywood. I tell my students all the time, you need to go out and experience life, not just come out of Harvard and start writing, because then you're going to write a movie like this where you think this is the way the 80s went. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it was kind of uh, interesting. It was a movie. Um, did you ever see Boogie Nights? Of course. Okay. Oh my God! I was just going to mention that bit, uh, earlier, but um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. And who and who directed Boogie Nights? Anderson. Yeah, no. Michael Paul Anderson. Paul, is it Paul Thomas Anderson? Paul is that Thomas. Paul, okay? I get confused because What's I always name, thinking of the guy from Starsky and Hutch. Paul Anderson Thomas. I believe? no Paul Thomas Anderson. Okay, Paul, Paul Thomas, Thomas Anderson. Right. So it really captures the end of the 70s, 80s. When he directed that movie, he wasn't even 30. Wow. Yeah. And See, but I that's somebody that, who just like kind of you know, but that's a great director. He's obviously directed a, a bunch of more things that are quite good. Some people just have their handle on how yeah, they're going to tackle just, something. And these are this is clearly written by somebody who probably used to be on heroin years ago, like the person that wrote, wrote Alf, and just uh, you know is washed up and stupid. You can't well, tell me Steven Spielberg directed that movie. The reason why I was going to mention Boogie Nights earlier is because you were. Mentioned that song, uh, Sister Christian Motoring. The Boogie Nights, when they put that song in there, that was amazing scene. Amazing scene. Isn't that amazing. funny how it can work two different yeah. ways by somebody competent and somebody who clearly yeah. doesn't get it? You're right. Exactly. And also, very underrated performance in that movie, I think, is uh, um, Alfred Molina in that scene. Oh, right. The uh, drug okay. dealer. He had the bathrobe on and stuff, right? Right. Yeah. And, and he said, hey, Ricky Springfield, he's a friend of mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, you know, that just that 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 scene in, with the pool when, you know, at kind of the beginning of the, the movie, which, which goes on for about, what, a half hour? <laughs> that's unbelievable movie making. You're never bored. But that's because right. you're getting the fact that it's a full day party and that's this right. is what it was. This is the porn industry in the late 70s. Yeah early 80s not just like a normal hollywood i mean it it's brilliant i i agree it's it's in my top 10 movies of all time that house yeah. is actually up for sale i think oh is that right and and yeah. burt reynolds was even good and that's when he was in his decline and he was and, and he hated the movie that's he nominated was, he looks, nominated he for an academy movie. award yeah because yeah. chris he's he was an idiot he was like travolta yes. you know he just didn't get it he right. never knew what was best for him. And that guy, right. Hal Needham, led him into this bad place that s- destroyed his career. Why? Do you think right. Hoople was like a really great movie? <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, you know, just Burt Reynolds never should have gotten in another car after Smokey and the Bandit, you know. And, right. and how many Smokey and the Bands were there? Were there like three? Oh, three? There were three. Right. There's yeah. three. There was Smokey one and two, which were just on last night, and I watched them. And yeah. then there was they called it at first. Smokey is the bandit, and then they just changed it to Smokey and the Bandit three. Ew. Uh, and that's just uh, Jackie Gleason and uh, right. what's Jerry uh, Reed? Jer- Jerry Reed, right? Yeah, Jerry Reed. It, yeah. Um, in that's a uh, Southbound and Down. I think that song came from there, from the first you one. I'm, eastbound and Down. Eastbound. And down. I yeah. saw that. I saw that in a driving movie. Oh, cool! And it, well, I remember I loved smoking the band. I thought Jackie Gleason like he steals that movie. Oh, he was, he was unbelievable. Great. Well, that's why. And you know, in the second one, he's really good too. And he plays all these other characters. He plays those two other characters, his brothers that he had been using like in the fifties. For yeah. it, it's kind of cool. It's not a 
it's you know it, i think it made a lot of money and it was really successful the second one but when you look at it now it's really weird it's just close-ups of him sally field's not with him half the time because she's a huge oscar winner at this point the fact that they got her at all is a miracle but he, well, he was he was with uh, burt reynolds to yeah. talk her out of taking the role of norma ray <laughs> see what i'm saying chris just made the point of why yeah. burt reynolds is an ass and didn't know that <laughs> that boogie nights is a great movie yeah <laughs> and, and again i was just looking up online you know they have one of those things the clickbait you know where they're like they have top 20 worst movies of all time john travolta is in four of them oh maybe my God. five i didn't i didn't finish the, the Wait, list. Is, is staying alive one of them yes oh fucking yeah. hey, did you ever see staying alive murphy of course six oh, times oh it is such no. i can watch that movie all the time i can yeah, watch I've it, on it. I've, I've actually i didn't know you were kidding chris because i've probably seen it six seven times maybe i've easily times. seen it six well, seven times. and jeff do I you remember see, he, his jokes don't don't <laughs> land when they're not on it not so, one joke has landed yeah. yet so um no do you remember when it came out and they the ads were him and stallone working the the ads were that Stallone was also with his top off, you know, directing the movie. And it's like, oh, really? I, oh this I, is going to be unbelievable. They were showing the dance scenes and Sylvester Stallone is directing because he directed it. Chris, I don't know if you knew. I did um, know. He, he, he does it now for Hitchcock in the movie. Yes, he does. Right. They bump into each other. Right. And that's and the best part of the movie. Best part of the movie. Um, and get this. The Bee Gees wanted to write the music for it. Stallone said, no, he had his brother do the music instead. Yes, he did. Frank he, Stallone. The, the Bee Gees do do a couple of songs in it, which is which actually one song is very good. Um, but you no, know, I like the big finale of it. I think it was called "Season in Hell." S no, Satan's Alley. Satan's Alley. That's right. <laughs> and and the director what, what, looked like Kenny Loggins. I love that. That is the part, Jeff. Where I say I want there to be an actor. That's the part I want to play. The bearded guy who's like, "Look, Monero, Monero. I, I don't trust you, but I'm going to give you a chance." You know yeah, what I mean? Okay. That's like the best. I mean, do it again. Know, right out of Central. Cat. Again. <laughs> right. Again. But this time, I want you to use passion. You know, and that girl, Fanola Hughes. I mean, that's how I knew John Travolta was probably gay. He's still friends with that girl. He's friends with Frenchie from Greece. He's friends with these women gay. Would you have picked, <laughs> if you were John Travolta, would you have picked Fiola Hughes or would you have stayed with Cynthia Rhodes? I would have picked Fanola Hughes. You're crazy. I In don't a get second. It. No way. Wait, are you talking about their personalities or looks? Looks and body. I'm not a short hair person. I can't stand it. She was so hot. She, she's the same one. Me. This is why I hate Dirty Dancing. Oh, is because thing. in real life, there is no way a guy like Johnny Castle is giving up full-figured woman, uh, Cynthia Rhodes, for baby. There's no I, way. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't. I never liked her. David? Yes. You see you're, you're not a short haired girl person, but how about Phoebe Cates in um, Fast Times of Ridgemont High? But she had long hair in that movie. Oh, she did? Yeah. Way to go again. Yes. Wow. She did. He's, uh, how about this guy? But this is who you wanted as your co host. I, huh? I wanted him as my co host. I'm I'm saying, saying, I think my analogy of how improv works is exactly correct on this you know he's just denying like it's, <laughs> you're supposed to say yes and yes and like they show on the, the when they do it probably family guy or ted 2 which is the greatest right. opening you movie that round, Pascal, but i'll get you you ever see ted 2 jeff i the hated ted i hated both ted movies well you ever see that but there's scenes you know that are so good like where they're doing improv and they're just yelling out all the stuff you always want to yell out in improv like give us a situation 9 11 <laughs> and a person bill cosby we i think i heard starbucks <laughs> hey right, we're Dave. giving you the stuff to work are you just, just here from the dark hey we're giving you the tools man you're just not using <laughs> can you tell me dave what, what was the biggest problem you had with greece too I, first of all, Greece two the the casting, you know, like you, when you thought that in Greece one when they when they casted um, Rizzo, who was that? Uh, Stocker Stocker Channing. Stocker Channing. He was our was age that we are now. Thirty seven when they cast. No, her. no, she must have been in her sixties or seventies. She was not. Yeah, she looked sure? like she was. Yeah, that's what I'm kidding. But, but, I, but <laughs> in high school, they're, they're supposed to be in high school. Lorna Luft. Okay, Lorna right. Luft, who was uh, Liza, Liza Minnelli's sister. sister, right? Right. She was supposed to be in high school. Yeah, she had it. I think she had already had a hysterectomy. I'm <laughs> not sure. Okay, <laughs> she had. How did anyone like you fucked up the first time in casting? And then, of course, a very cool Adrian Zemed. 
Oh my, uh, the shortest man in the history of men they make as the tough guy. And that's the other thing about maybe you're talking about Greece, the first one, Chris, where, you know, John Travolta is super cool. Uh, there's, great, it's eh? a fact. Right. And why is he hanging out with these nitwits? You know, Danny Putsy and Duty or du- no, it's Sonny, Sonny, Sonny Putsy and Putsy. Duty. And Duty. Duty. And so Duty. Adrian Smed being the coolest guy in school. I, again, you have to question who, who's making this? What, who are the people that are in charge? One of the cool guys, Dave, was was Shooter McGavin. Who's that from the Adam Sandler movie? From Happy Gilmore. Oh, the right. I uh, I remember that guy hooks up with the girl from Fame, right? The, in the yeah, bunker they're, they're saying, in the bunker they're, they're, scene. Yeah, they're saying do it for your country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. I thought I recognized that guy. And yeah, they have the the, the, the horrible girl from Fame and uh, Adrian Smith, of course. And then Michelle Pfeiffer somehow gets stuck stuck in this movie the most beautiful woman maybe I've ever seen. And that's she the does only get to sing that's, Cool Rider. Yes, she does. He's a cool rider. I mean, it's just, she. She's dancing. so beautiful that you know. I'll sit there and watch the movie. She's so gorgeous, just so stunning, and really paid her dues. I don't know if you saw Ad- the Animal House TV show called Delta House. Of course, she's, I did. She's in that. She's in that. Yeah, yeah. It's I a, little they had the most a little heavier. A little heavier. Periphery characters to reoccur their roles in it. Remember. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Well, yeah. I think Flounder was he was probably the heavy lead, and I think the dean recreated his role, Dean Wormer. Was it, I don't I don't remember him. I remember, the, but there was three guys. Yeah, I, and I think D Day maybe because because see D Day is a great example of a character actor who is just working whatever he's asked to do. I don't know if you've seen this guy's unbelievable credit listing, but he you know he he works. He's a working actor. He you know he's in my cousin Vinny. Right. And he's in right. Legally Blonde he's lawyer. too. He doesn't care. He's um, you know, he just is a working actor and that's cool. And that's why he did the TV show. He's like, "Yeah, I'll do it." Of course. I'm not trying to be uh Michelle Pfeiffer here or anything. I just I just want to work. You you get you get that I love part. that mentality. You get that you part. It pays your mortgage, it paid for renovation, of course. People always ask, "Why did Michael Caine do Jaws 4?" And he goes, "I wanted to buy a house." There you go. Didn't you? Um, you, you almost worked on um, iCarly. Well, what, what happened with that? What happened? iCarly? Oh yeah. no, I know what you're saying. Um, I had a friend who worked when my nieces were growing up. We were really into iCarly, which was on Nickelodeon, and I had I was friendly with the cat, or I became friendly with the casting. I became friendly because I wanted to be on iCarly uh, with the casting <laughs> director at Nickelodeon, and it was great. One day I walked in, and she had a board of headshots in front of her desk. And I was on that board with uh, four other eight year olds. <laughs> <laughs> and I th- I took a picture of it. I have it somewhere with my headshot being on like this 40 year old man at the time with uh, a bunch of eight year old girls and boys. <laughs> Thank God it was all girls and boys, not just eight year old boys. <laughs> OK, so this show is called Who's Your Band? Yeah. And we haven't really spoke too much music, but I want to stick with the theme of, of, of music and watching videos. So I have debated and I had this big debate with Dustin Schaefen on a show that we, we uh, do. Um, and I said, the song rock me tonight by Billy Squire is a great song. The video killed his career. I would love to get you two guys input on this. Okay. Adam, can you show, rock me tonight so just before you know as as he's setting it up billy squire is one of the biggest rock stars on the planet in the uh early 80s he has three consecutive gold uh i'm sorry platinum albums which means he sold over three million on each one he can get anyone he wants to play on these albums he's had uh everyone in queen plays on him he's selling out arenas and then this 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 video comes out directed by Kenny Ortega. Adam, can you roll the clip? Now, this is supposed to appeal to like like rockers, like guys. Not not like us, but guys. Shirtless. Chris, do you like that? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Look at his shirt. It's a, it's, a, it's so of the time. It's so eighties. 
Ah, oh, look at it. Look, this thing is snapping. Look how awful that thing is snapping is. Oh my god. Uh, can you stop it for a second, Adam? Now think about guys like in Long Island, think about guys in 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 Alabama and they're watching this video. And you know, it, it's a rocker. It's a rocker and this is going on. What were they thinking? Well, Jeff, when you're finished, I have a whole thing I have been obsessed with this video <laughs> since it came out and I even wrote a play and no, you performed it of this video. Uh, I made this was how I made the play and my song was called rock me all over and it was completely based on this i've been obsessed i knew this story from 40 years ago how it ruined his career i knew the whole thing i was obsessed with this song i was obsessed with what happened to him i was obsessed with who gave him the advice and my play which was called ty romeo the guy's name was ty romeo instead of billy squire was that he was billy squire and and uh and he was trying to make a comeback in the 90s and this a gay video destroyed his career my video was it was uh he was dressed up in a a, a naval suit uh going down the street with uh being cheered on by construction workers and policemen you know like did you take but, that naval idea from philadelphia the movie philadelphia yes no no i never saw philadelphia you never saw phil oh you have to say it no so it was just it was this exact i was making fun of the video and that beavis and bud had destroyed me and th this is the premise of the play my i was the lead character and he was trying to make this comeback in the 90s he had a, i have all these songs i actually recorded them what his big song was called um raise the guillotine <laughs> and uh it was the complete billy squire story he made one wrong video that ruined his career and it was just based on this that's, unbelievable that's bad advice who was thinking i mean i know where he was going with this because we've seen a lot of 80s videos wait where's he going with this well we've seen a lot of 80s you don't think he I misread mean, his market no i think he got bad advice i you know guys look at the poison album cover the the original one right right and they're all dressed like women but that, that so was twisted sister so it was a lot of bands right molly it, molly cruz first album you know that, yeah that's and their it, early and it images worked. like that i don't know why it worked all the all the girls were going for these albums right and so you know then let's go one step further let's just make him dance hey the problem is he's a bad dancer and, awful and you know the moves he's making are bad but then if it's like it's, um Billy Joel has that Allentown video that, and he's been on a couple talk shows. He goes, I didn't realize until recently how gay it was. Jeez, it's just men showering. I don't know how <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, how I don't know how that, that, that could be gay. How could it be interpreted as gay? Guys, all guys shirtless. All, well, he, all but sweaty. he's like, I don't know how it got past yeah. me, but the way it got past is that's what yeah. they were doing back then. The yeah, song, a, the song is great. Did. I've always liked this song. It's in my head all it's a the great time. song. Yeah. It's a great song. This this was a big hit. This yeah. album, this was his last big album. Adam, last one. And throw throw a little bit more of the clip in. Oh come on, Dave! Look at this. I mean, did he have eyes? Did he rewatch the video? He's wriggling around on the on the ground. Yeah, but he had other like people telling him it was cool. Yeah, who told him it it wasn't cool? Probably was girls. Girlfriend. Yeah, no, his probably girlfriend girl, told him right not to do it. Oh, is that right? Yeah, but he figured he was going to dance like this. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, maybe it, I think it came out in 84, so maybe he was trying to be like Michael Jackson. But then you also put on a pink thing. I mean, what? it just gets worse as it goes on. It, it, he, I think he's got some eye makeup on there, too, right? Yeah, but we said that was acceptable because that's what the bands were doing. I'll, right? I'll get, but everything about this is just like you're not reading your market. But and it's funny because in in a way, I, and you said Kenny Ortega directed it, right? Right. Well, Kenny Ortega directed a whole bunch of Michael Jackson stuff, and the fact 
of the matter is, is that if this guy moves okay, he just doesn't know how to dance. If he was better, like Michael Jackson, this would have been an unbelievable video of him just dancing in his room. He just couldn't pull it off. No, he also he has no muscle tone. If this was Michael Jackson, this would have been one of the greatest videos ever made. It's like that Christopher Walken video by Fat Boy Slim. I love that video. Right? And what's that? Him dancing in a room because he's just so mesmerizing. And unfortunately, Billy Squire is not. You know what's another good video of a guy just dancing? Like, you know, like what this, I guess, you know, what this was intended to be. Did you ever see Jamaraquai's video? Oh, my oh. God. Ex excellent example. Ex excellent example where they stepped it up a notch and had the furniture moving and everything exactly and he, and he moves chris you know how we always talk about dick van dyke of course and how and he wasn't a dancer but he was able to move so well that you were mesmerized all the time but he showed up people that could dance which the clip we always watch chris you know that uh, the twizzle on the, the twizzle, dick van yeah. dyke show mary tyler moore is a legendary you know she, we know she was a big dancer he shows her up like it's nobody's business because the guy could move and you couldn't wait to see him move and this guy moves a little but there's something wrong and you're right why didn't somebody let him know but then the question is, I wonder if anybody would let me know, <laughs> you know, and, and at that time, you just said he had he was the biggest guy in the world. Everybody wanted to work with him. Even if somebody told him it wasn't working, I don't know whether I would believe them if I was at his status. It, it, it happened. I, I saw him okay, in Madison Square Garden and he was great. I saw him then also open for Queen and blow him away. He yeah, was and you better know what than the, Queen. And you know what the thing is, Jeff, after this happened, John Bon Jovi, who was on top of the world, you know, two years later after this. That's disaster, right. He comes out very shortly afterwards. He That's tries right. to help him. He wrote a song with me. He tried to get his career back on track because he worshipped Billy Squire and uh, nothing worked. I mean, if you couldn't get the hottest star at the time to help, you know, it wasn't going to happen. No, but I mean, like it's I, you've never seen anything like it where he was he was filling up Madison Square Garden and then he wouldn't be able to then even play the Palladium. Like his audience just just abandoned him. Yeah, yeah. Because, because his audience video. was 15, thirteen to fifteen year old boys, and uh, you know they didn't care for gay at the time. Even though it's odd when you think about it, because like I said, the, all those album covers with the makeup and everything, we were all buying them and totally into it. Even though those covers were made for thirteen year old girls. But you know, Twisted Sister was playing hard music you know motley crew was playing hard music even poison okay this guy wasn't hard you know right. he was playing he was, he was he rock was rock pop and those guys were more into like a little bit metal rock that's right yeah that's right like even rob halford who was gay was was considered more manly than this on that <laughs> video <laughs> yeah it's a fascinating video and i don't wonder if he's ever even spoken about it i i like I said, I've been carrying this around for years before there was the Internet, before there was YouTube. I remembered this video in my head and wrote this play. You know, I did it in 2000, 1999, 2000 in L.A. That's and, great. That you uh, did in fact, I had Ken Ober this. in it. You remember Ken Ober? Yeah. Remote control, Ken, right? Yeah. Ken Ober played the evil villain who was uh, trying to scam, you know, my character or whatever. It was really something else. In the book about mtv i don't know if you read it but there's a whole chapter devoted to this video as being the worst video of all time yeah i have i think i have that book and then i wrote a movie about that book uh because uh the guy that used to produce the uh, letterman show uh, rob morton uh he you know was big on mtv he hired all the, the vjs and um he told me hey we should write a a movie together about mtv and i wrote it and we sent it to HBO and they didn't seem to like it for some reason. I think it's great. And quite frankly, still nobody's done it. And I have it you know, sitting here fun. waiting. With all with all like the different networks that are on, you would figure someone would pick that up. Because that's this is a this is a story so that, I don't, that I don't think is and gonna mine, go away. The script that I wrote only goes up to the first I mean, now I can make it a series really easily, but it was supposed to be like an HBO movie, like like the late shift or something. Um and it just goes up to the first day of MTV. It's all the work that went into it on August 1st, 1981. It ends. That's when it ends. But then, you know, there's so much more to do. Murphy, you're a big trivia guy. Who is, uh, what was the first video ever played on MTV? Uh, that would be Video Kill the Radio Star. That's right. What's okay. the second one? Um, Mike Nesmith's um, 
going to Rio. No, <laughs> it is Pat Benatar. Oh, Just hit me don't... with your best shot. No, no, I can't. I, I, I remember what the song is. Not love is a battlefield. No, that was much later. That was much later. Um, not hell. Uh, fire and ice. No, if you said it, I'll know it. Hell is for children. We are young. No, no, that's way down. That was road. like her comeback album yeah, <laughs> right. after she had a kid. Yeah, that's an, that. She's been another person I've been crowing about for years. I have been for years, for years. I work. Listen, I toured for nineteen years with bands. I used to do the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame every single year, and for years, for years, for years, I always argued how Pat Benatar should be. You better run. You better run. Thank, Thank you, Adam. See, Adam. This, oh, this okay. is why Adam is the so best. At you're this. saying you wanted her in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yeah. Yes, and, and she, she finally, finally got in last year. She yeah, finally right. got in last year. But when you look at everyone who got in before her how do they keep her out for so long uh, i don't you know it's all politics i don't know you know well, did you know rick newman the i was gonna, I was gonna, gonna say that that's yeah. uh, uh the dave's pal yeah well he's dead he just died like uh like yeah. six months ago but uh he, you know he discovered her she used to do sets at catch a rising star that's in right. between the comics you know yeah benatar's fascinating story she was a singer, and and Patty Smythe was a singer at the comic strip, but from Scandal. Is that right? Yes, I saw her because I did the McEnroe show uh, about ten years or twenty years ago, mm -hmm. I guess now on CNBC. She's, with, she's still married to McEnroe, right? Yeah, I believe so. And uh, so his first guest was uh, Scandal. Uh, <laughs> yeah. he, and he had her. It was great. I was there the first show. Just actually, I was just there. I happened to be there that particular day because my friend was producing it, and uh, she sang "Goodbye to You," and it was really exciting. Oh, <laughs> and you know what? Eddie Van Halen wanted her to be the lead singer to replace David Lee Roth. But, yeah, how about that? But, but McEnroe, uh, I think, knocked her up. Yeah, and, and uh, that's the reason why she she passed on the gig. But she was off the, the spot yeah that's cool yeah she's uh she's badass she um she's interesting yeah. i think they're married because she's a good match for him she doesn't take any shit. that's why you know she's one of those people that could i mean she was never heard from again really after you know in the 80s but in that you know she was she's like it's called patty Smy smith smythe right smythe right. With, right. Yeah. With, with with uh scandal you know it's not it's, it's like she had to have her name on it she was one of I those people. The, the, no, it wasn't her. It was a record company that pushed for that. Oh, was it? I yeah, because they, they wanted her to go uh, to go solo, which and she did. Actually, was, one of one of her albums, her solo album, I, one of the songs is in my head all the time. It's a duet with uh, this other guy. It's fantastic. Uh, there's a danger in loving somebody. Oh yeah, I, yeah, and uh, yeah, it's on the yeah I know that song. Da, 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 da. Sometimes yeah, I can't remember love goes, just ain't enough sometimes love just ain't enough yeah 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 i'm good. surprised that wasn't in rock of ages <sighs> i think it's a 90s song i think that's why okay there you go yeah. right and it, it took place in, in the 80s you know and another i thought like weird coupling was paul simon with edie brickell yeah that's so and they're still married yeah and then remember but, who edie brickell was and Murph? the no. new bohemians so pretty like 22 year old girl did that she was what so i am is what i am yeah, you remember yeah. that song murph in the, the early 90s edie probably. burkell and the new book you, you never saw the video she looked she had she was bad for she had stinky feet and she's probably like a little overgrown downstairs like but it didn't girl. make a difference because she was just like so cute and and so and, and hippie-ish yeah and and then so um so then she wrote this awful musical with steve martin called bright star it's the one of the worst things i've ever seen I don't, that's recent uh, i don't know why she doesn't record more music maybe she just lets paul do his thing and that's, that's what it. i think but it is yeah i think he was on made... howard stern uh last week and he was talking about it you know oh really no, we just like each other's company so i don't know good interview yeah you heard it yeah it wasn't it was great huh yeah i like, I like paul when, when somebody like him an icon a true icon not just using it as a name um breaks down his songs you know and oh, plays like well that's isn't that, amazing uh, is that the best yeah. yeah i like his explanation on why him and arc off uncle uh broke up but i you know he he said something at the end which I, i'm just curious if you guys think it's true he was like duos don't stay together well i think that i think that's true i think a band is easier yeah. for some reason to stay together than a duo it's just you and another you know 
I don't know. What are all the duo comedian uh, play people we know? I you know, they don't laugh. Did they stay together? Uh, did the Every Brothers stay together? Or not no, really? because you know what the problem is. It's very rare. Even that, uh, what are the, the the British ones that can't get along? The brothers can't even get oh, along. Oasis. Oasis. I think what happens is one is usually more talented than the other. Right. And, and that's, you know, the other one is used for backup vocals. Like our Garfunkel's, let's face it, his voice is unbelievable. And that's where it ends. You know, he, he, oh, so oh, wrote the, the other one's like, well, what do I need you for? And he's saying, if you're going to yeah. go off and do movies and I need you the to movies, record, yeah. then uh, what do I, and what is his wife at the time say, well, what do you need him for? Well, he he got pissed off, Paul, because he would sing, uh, Art would sing Bridge Over Troubled Water and get a standing ovation. And he never once would go, hey, how about the author? He never once would bring Paul on stage. Hey, he wrote that. So he'd say, hey, like you say, hey, fuck you. Well, that and Jeff, I'm sure you understand that that's my thing where I just, I guess maybe it's this age. Who knows what you're like in your 20s? But you take uh, the police and Stuart Copeland, who just doesn't seem to get that he should be thanking his lucky right. gods that he found sting he we know he's a phenomenal drummer but no one would know who he was maybe he would do movie soundtracks or something if it wasn't for sting and those guys just still to this day can't get along and <laughs> wouldn't right. you if you're Stuart copeland go like well you know what would be a great money grab the police coming back for 10 nights somewhere we could Feed a, feed a starving yeah. country and they can't get along because he's so jealous of sting well i think people right. were blowing smoke up Stuart copeland's ass because i think his brother was uh, the producer and i yeah. think he, he and he was sitting there going you know Stuart, you really are the backbone of this band you know sting may play the the bass and he may write all the songs and he may write uh all the lyrics and he, I mean, may, he may have all the lo looks but <laughs> yeah. man he you, has all you, the looks. you really yeah but you really those fills that's what really gets the kids well, going but but it's funny because he did start the band and it's true it was his yeah. band but, you know but, but it's like what the you, guy he and so that's what's so great about mick fleetwood that guy got it exactly like, boy am i one lucky bastard <laughs> i'll just right. keep back i'll go as long as they need me and as long as they want to stay with it, it'll be great <laughs> i don't have to do anything except supply my name to the band yeah like her Aaron, and and chris christy mcvee's husband didn't write anything either right no, <laughs> they, they went along for the ride i they love those got guys <laughs> they got it yeah 100 100 100 percent <laughs> that's why i always say like with um uh was it Ted, tim allen when he had uh, the home improvement show and you find a Pamela Anderson, right. you know, just like, you know, who cares who's what? Oh, it's not. Oh, well, she's taking, no, she's stealing focus from me. Are you kidding? Your show right. wouldn't be on the air if it wasn't for her. like, you know, Baywatch. If David Hasselhoff's getting angry because everybody's into Pamela Anderson and not him. I'm like, are you out of your mind? You, this is what you dream of. Having something that's going to keep your show on the air, dummy. <laughs> Do you know how many times that guy, especially during the O.J. Simpson tra trace, tried to show everyone how talented he was? He was so desperate. I don't understand why they love me in Germany. They don't love me here. And then on the O.J. chase, he was doing a pay-per-view special, and then he didn't even know the O.J. chase was going on. We were watching it. That That's why everybody was over my house that day, because uh, we were watching the David Hasselhoff pay-per-view special and the Knicks game, the Knicks-Rockets game. That, that was that was, uh, that was uh, the game five, I think. Yeah, and the OJ chase was the exact same night, and as the David Hasselhoff. And I his, remember Dave. You know where I was watching that? I was uh, at remember Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. Oh yeah. On Sixth Avenue, yes, 56, 57. I was I was with uh, someone from Saturday Night Live sitting Ooh. there. The, 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 she she worked with uh, Tim Hall. Uh, what's his name? Phil Hartman. Oh. Okay. And uh, we we went there for dinner, and we were watching. We went there to watch the Nick game, and it gets interrupted by the OJ Simpson thing. Wasn't that the greatest when you were in a place where that you know everybody was watching together? That see, I don't think that'll ever happen yeah. again because no. nobody watches together anymore, unless you're at a bar watching sports, I guess. But we well, you know what? I used to live in the city, so that's what I would always do. I lived around the corner from Broadway Comedy Club. So, like, I had a small apartment, so I wouldn't want to stay in my apartment. I go to like bars and watch. I remember. Mm -hmm. I think it was the 89 World Series where it was the earthquake. Yeah, San Francisco. Yeah, I remember be, I remember being out and watching that with a group of people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I used to watch all that stuff with a group of people, but now I guess we're old and we don't have anybody. <laughs> I'm all alone. Uh, actually, Chris and I were lucky enough. 
on, on his birthday, which of course is September 11th, which there's nothing funnier than, you know, poor guy, his dad leaves him, his mom's insane, his brother ODs, and then his birthday, September 11th. I mean, that's when, you know, you really just have no luck in life and it's just over and you got to start over the next one will be so much better there's going to be a special place for him in heaven and then he's like you know what i want to do just i want to celebrate my birthday with you watching the jets and that awesome aaron Rodgers stick it to the bills <laughs> but you, know what? you guys did get to see a great great game it was great but he of came course, in yeah. late he came in late, so I was in the bar was going. I had to tell him the bar was going crazy. I'd never seen it like this as a Jets fan. I'd never seen people cheering in the twenty years, you know, until they made the playoffs twenty years ago or something. And and everybody was having a good time. They were doing shots. And as soon as play. Chris Rocks walks in, everybody's just down at the press because the thing with Aaron Rodgers had just happened. He goes, "Boy, I thought it'd be a little bit more alive." And I'm like, "It was before you got here." <laughs> how, are, how is everybody? <laughs> Is everybody happy? <laughs> that's in my mind. That's the way he walked in. How yeah. are you? How are you? <laughs> Guy who can't read the room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was, it was so funny. I, I felt so bad for him, even though he, he couldn't have cared. You know, he's not a Jets guy. He doesn't care. Um, it was so funny. And then it turned out to be a great game. But yeah, and, this, and, and that's when Chris is at his best. <laughs> and our buddy Eric Bronstein was there. Yeah. Oh, a lot of laughs that guy is. <laughs> hey that's my that's my boy well i like him too it's just funny like we took all these pictures and he's not smiling in one of them i'm like i never noticed he doesn't smile why is that well thanks for bringing him <laughs> like, he gave me a laundry so people he could bring i go no 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 <laughs> I, I brought brian c who didn't smile well it's all right he's a nice guy He's a very nice yeah, guy. Yeah, we do have a, you know, I have a list. Chris has a, well, actually, Chris is too kind a of person to have a list, but, you know, I have a long list of people who cannot be invited. Uh, right. That's why when Jeff, when he told me there was going to surprise, it's, what Chris knows, it's usually Bichetti. And yeah. although, you know, he's great. <laughs> How do you, just like, you know Mike Bichetti? For, just for the past 30 years. <laughs> How do you know Mike Bichetti? I think, I, do I know him through Chris or did I meet him on my own? I don't even know. I don't you wanna, know. But, Dave, yeah. you want to hear a small world? Yeah. When I was a freshman in high school, either a freshman or sophomore in high school, Bichetti was a senior in that same high school. Oh, you grew up in Staten Island. I did. And me and my friend, Chris Lockhart, who is now like like a big, big wig at CAA, okay, we would like rip into Bichetti for about 20 minutes. And then like when we would do it, like, uh, no offense. They go, oh, no, 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 I'm taken. <laughs> and... Um, and Mike was actually 30 at the time. <laughs> His father was the janitor in the school. Now you're talking sense. See, now that I believe 100%. If you were making a joke, I would be like, no, you're telling the truth. No, I, I'm tell I am 100% telling. Oh, no, I believe you. <laughs> he I didn't the, know that, but I believe you. He was the same way in high school, but only a thinner and had more hair. Oh, right. Yeah, but do you know, really did nice you see blonde hair. when uh, he sued me on the Judge Jerry? No, I sued him on the Judge Jerry show. Oh, like yeah. Last year. No. The last year. This story yeah. goes until last year. I yeah. sued him on the Judge Jerry show for ruining my movie. Yeah. <laughs> and Rachel Feinstein was his star witness of what a jerk I am. And who's star witness? Was, uh, who was oh, your star? And Chris, Chris Murphy was my star witness. And he and he's <laughs> he had his camera set up just are. like this. Uh you know, no white balance, and uh, just said uh, Dave Juskow's a doll. He would never do anything to harm anybody. <laughs> no, I won't. I, I can't. I won't have uh, Buschetti on this show because he cancels all the time. Well, that's uh, why. That's the uh, what I use during Judge Jerry. I'm like, but he cancels all the time, Your Honor. <laughs> yeah, you should have had me as a character. And, but, oh, the best was like, Your Honor, I was having a heart attack that day. I'm like, you see, his excuses never stop. <laughs> see, too bad <laughs> Sean is in here today. He was having a fling with, with, with the dominatrix. Is he still living at home? Yes, he'll never. I think leave. you know. It's funny you say that because this yes, yesterday I was watching the Artie Lang show that David was actually involved with for a very long time. I was watching Mike Bichetti do the weather, and it was <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Have you ever seen them? Oh yeah, go on, you, yeah. Go on YouTube, 
Artie Lang show Mike Machete the weather. It's hilarious. And the oh, fact that, that Artie out. used Mike as his co-host was yeah, brilliant. hilarious. Brilliant. Right. Because he yeah. could always, every time he'd get into trouble or there was your a, a three-hour show, yeah. he would just go, Mike, your thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I, I like Sharon Stone, but I, 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 I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a brilliant that was a stroke of uh, genius meanwhile uh he got fired multiple times because he was asking for more money right you believe this guy's the jackie joke man of uh, the Artie lang show <laughs> just had the greatest bet in the world he had a parlay with all the mascots of different college teams spelled out bochetti <laughs> yeah, it was a tease <laughs> it was a tease it was a 10 or 11 game tease and, and it came in Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I I I want to have him on this. No, no, don't. But I mean, no, don't she, even go there. Don't even. No, my, my co-host gets so mad because he'll he'll, he'll, he'll Sean will hit up Mike, and then when he cancels, Sean just gets like furious at him. Yeah. No, he like, no, it's not worth it, and it's not like he's going to be a you know a like a, a guest that's going to be well. Maybe I can't. I don't want to say not memorable, but uh, oh, he'll be memorable. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. I don't memorable. know. It's not like you said. The canceling is uh, unbearable. Yeah. Mike, if you're out there, please be on this show. <laughs> but like but, but like back in high school, he's a great guy. <laughs> no offense. Oh, we all like him. Nobody doesn't like I Mike Bichetti. Of course. You know? Of course. He's a sweetheart. So, let me tell you something. I guys. actually just played a bitter end recently with, with uh, Sherrard Small. And the reason why I got the gig because Mike Bichetti canceled. <laughs> See, wow. it, it always comes up murphy yes <laughs> See? Let me tell you, who, got, who says my life's been terrible that's <laughs> right dave just got did but anyway all right this hour well we went over an hour so this one unbelievably fast i can't thank you guys enough man this this was so so much fun dave you are such a funny dude well, can i just tell you one thing i know we gotta go we have that smithereens thing we you know i i wasn't sure what the premise of the thing was but i it was you know i thought we were gonna go over like your favorite band and i didn't know what to say and then when i saw your smithereen things above your head they could have been my favorite band and i went to see them not only multiple times but i saw uh what's his name the last day he performed pat denunzio pat denunzio yeah he's from the same place my sister lives and i saw him on his last day because um my old girlfriend was his old girlfriend and they remained friends and she took me to see his last concert. If I asked you who your favorite band was, you may have brought up the smithereens. I, I'm well, I probably wouldn't have thought of them until I saw them. And now I realize I liked them so much. This I, past, I saw them so many times this past who is summer. Your favorite band, Dave? The, hold on a second, Chris, the, this past yeah. summer. Okay. I perform comedy every single weekend. I set for one. And it was because I was with the Smithereens, and I, you know, I was uh, MC and I had to bring them up. Who's the singer now? They have two. They use um, Robin Wilson from the Jim Blossoms and oh. Marshall Crenshaw. Oh. And they on that drum, that, it's the, oh. yes, the three original plus uh, Robin and uh, oh, Marshall. that could work. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got multiple Robin stories Wilson's about them. But better than I love. Marshall. I thought they were fantastic. I mean, really, even the uh, cover, so, uh, you know, albums they did were great. Well, they did great Beatles stuff. Yeah. And they did some good uh, Badfinger stuff. Yeah, they made full oh. albums of their favorite bands. I, yeah. I like that. You know, they They're great. Care. I'm sorry, Murph. What were you going to say? I was just going to ask Dave, um, uh, who's his favorite band? I don't like know. I, like I did two seconds ago? No. Yeah. Way to go, Chris. <laughs> You've done it again. Uh, <laughs> I, I, didn't didn't. I said, if I asked you answer, who your favorite though. band was, would who's you have said the smithereens band? and then you said who's this who's your favorite no, band? But who's your favorite band dave you, you have to you, you give an answer i'm not gonna wait till jeff asks okay jeff. No, I'm, dave, I'm just kidding <laughs> who's your favorite band well you know jeff i'm glad you asked because <laughs> I, don't know, I, I really don't know i was maybe gonna say green day but you know what nowadays it's so hard to find Reeves. bands and they don't really have bands anymore that i would like i mean i like rock and um i like those kind of bands green day smithereens uh foo fighters for a long time it switches off you know if you're so, but that kind of rock but not metal but if you pop, I, pop rock if you like good rock if you want to check out a new band you just one new band i'm going to suggest to you check out a band called dirty honey dirty honey yeah right. if you like aerosmith type of music they're kind of like in the aerosmith vein yeah cool thank you 
So Dave, tell people how they can find you, where they can follow you, you know, your socials. Well, you know, it's uh, like at Dave Juskow, I think is the Instagram or something. And I have a show every week at six o'clock on Tuesdays. It's the Comedy Cellar nightly show, even though it's just one day a week. That's the that's the gag. <laughs> and that's on Tuesdays at six. In fact, well, I don't know when this comes out, but this Tuesday, Tom Papa will be our guest. And um, so sometimes we have comedians on or whatever, and we just uh, have fun. And otherwise, uh, my podcast is called Just Gow in the City. Guys, oh, well, we have a out. Billy Joel podcast. Billy, Billy Joel, Joel A to Z. Right. What do you mean you have a Billy Joel podcast? I forgot to mention that it's on this rock show. Sorry. <laughs> I've been doing a Billy Joel podcast with uh, comedian Alan Altman. We've been doing yeah. it for two years. It's Billy Joel A to Z. We go through every song alphabetically. I am a huge Billy Joel. You know what I did for Valentine's Day? So I, to- I kind of alluded that for 19 years I toured. And um, my friend, who now is Billy's tour manager, and for Valentine's Day, I took my wife, um, her brother, his girlfriend, my brother-in-law, sister-in-law, and six other people. I took them to Billy Joel for Valentine's Day. At MSG? At MSG. We had 12th row seats on the floor, six of us on the floor, six of us uh, a section up, and it was it was great his band is insane. Uh, what was it Mike Del, Del Juice? Yeah, yeah, Mike he, Del Judas. I yeah, think. He, he's fantastic. Yeah, the guy who's been playing guitar on that. We had a uh, Liberty DeVito on this show here. Oh, he came on our show too. He's yeah, very he's delightful. I wasn't great, sure how he'd yeah, be. <laughs> great guest. Yeah, I'm glad things yeah. are, are, are cool between him and Billy. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think you were a big Billy Joel. What, what give me three of your best Billy Joel songs? Well, they change every week now, but uh, I do like sleeping with the television on. Great song, oh, yeah. I love that. And uh, we, you know, so I two glass houses, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, I just uh, what was the one that just came up recently that we were talking about? I can't remember. I just I started my podcast recently with Stormfront, the song Stormfront. It it, it switches from week to week, so I really don't know anymore. I'm was so Stormfront involved. The one that it wasn't a big time out but it had um uh, we didn't start the Matt, fire no what was the one with uh down easter uh, alexa great song no but that's not uh jesus christ uh fuck matter of trust no that's the bridge the bridge not a great album no but i hate that song too you don't like i like modern woman and everybody makes fun of me for liking it oh it's terrible i like it sounds 80s and i it's like very 80s, 80s. music yeah <laughs> Why do you think I hated Rock of Ages so much? Yeah. They took all the songs I love and made them stupid. Yeah, it sounds like Easy Money. I, mean, when I you love did Easy Money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had um, uh, the guy that wrote the movies, Dennis Blair, uh, came on the show. Great oh, comedian, really? right? Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, yeah he told us some good Rodney yeah. stories. Who was he? The oh, I'm going to say he was the opener for for Rodney for years. For right? years, yeah. yeah, for years. Yeah. And then he told us like they kind of fell apart and. Uh, he came to see a show and he went to his wife. He goes, hey, tell me why I was mad at him again. Uh, it was so, okay, so so sleeping with the television on is one. What, what Name two more. Uh, I, you know, uh, crap. I don't know. I, Zanzibar? I do you like Zanzibar? You know, I do. Doing it all for Layla? We haven't got uh, all for Lena. Yeah. yeah, I do. I like I don't know what I like best. I'm trying to think what I listen to in the car now because I'm so mixed up with the podcast. It changes from day to day. I like all these kind of uh, unreleased tracks too that nobody knows about that we talk about on the podcast all the time. So I, I'm not there yet where I can, you know, say my favorite one yet. We're saving it for April when the show ends. Well, listen, guys, <laughs> if you like Billy Joel, check out the, the Billy Joel podcast with Dave Juskow and Elon Altman. Yep. Murph, where can people find you? Uh, Chris Webby comedian on Instagram. That's it. All right, guys. <laughs> thank post. you so much for joining <laughs> us, man. We really, really appreciate. It. This was a fun episode. Oh yeah, it was super fun. Thank you for having us. It's no, fun. my my pleasure. You're a very good host. You, oh, your voice, thank you. Um, yeah, your voice sounds really good. Like your opening when you talk about music, I enjoy listening. You sound like one of those old WNEW jocks. I like that. Oh, um, you know what, Adam? Can you isolate that? <laughs> and we'll, and the next time Sean is back on the show, can we open with that? There he goes. <laughs> and for those who care, my Very favorite Bill and... Joel song was. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I thought podcast is over. Get a better Adam, edit that part with Chris out. Okay. <laughs> Jeff gets it. <laughs> Say goodbye to Hollywood. Yeah, they have a great song.
on that note, guys, love you guys. Thank you so much. We'll catch you next time, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.